you've started making bowls, you've probably discovered that the cutting is the easy part. The real work with the bowls comes with the sanding, because the sanding is doing the work not just of a sander to smooth it out, but those shaping tools that they use on lathes. All right, so making bowls is very sanding intensive, but that's also the creative and fun part. And I thought it might be helpful for me to do a series of short videos on the sanders that I found healthy. So here I am now down at the shop, instead of the kitchen, because it's early in the morning and nobody is here yet. So I figured we would take advantage of this. All right, so this is our Delta vertical belt sander. And it is really a workhorse. One of the nice things about a community shop is that we have equipment that's often heavier duty than you're likely to find in your own home workshop. Now, I've received some comments about my working without protective gear. Now, please be aware that when I do things for real, this is what I use. First, I use my dust mask. I use goggles. Because the shop is noisy anyway, I invariably always have trouble adjusting these around the nose piece. I use hearing protection. Right, now, both vanity and practicality keep me from doing this for demos, but please understand that I always use this. You have to, you're kicking up a lot of dust and you don't want to inhale it. And that humming noise that you may hear in the background is our ambient dust collection system. All right, now, the first thing that you do when you use one of these is you need to make sure that the table is square, particularly in a community shop where you don't know who has used this last or what they've done with it. I always check for square. In the pockets of my apron, I carry certain basic tools, and one of them is this little engineer square. And I always check to make sure that the table is square to sandpaper. And there's a positive zero stop on it, and I usually make sure that it's adjusted properly. Now, if I'm going to adjust the angle, which I will show you later, with my little angle guide, I can make sure that I am working from a good zero. All right, zero in terms of the relationship between the table and the sandpaper. All right, now, in its flat position, there are a number of things that I use the sander for. Basically, I use it for neatening things up, rings, blanks. I use it for sanding in curves. I use it when I do my glue-ups and I want to get them as precise as I can. All right, now, in terms of neatening things up, what I have here is the inside of a project that I'm working on where I'm using a little bit of inlay. So if it comes out well, I'll post it on my blog. If it doesn't come out well, maybe I'll post it on my blog anyway. It's a cautionary tale. And this was the inside. This would be a discard, but it's laminated. It's, uh, what, what did I use? Sapelli, and too good to throw away. So what I did was I had a center point. I scrubbed a circle with my compass, which is another very basic tool. And I'm going to sand to the line. All right, so bear with me for a moment. This will be a little noisy, and let me show you how I do this. Because it's very difficult 
to keep the orientation. It's very easy to go off. See, I've sanded this down. I've turned off the dust collection system so that you can hear me better. And it's almost a perfect circle. It will be very, very usable and saves a lot of wear and tear on these smaller hand sanders. I mean, this is really the tool of choice for this. I also use this if I'm gluing up strips. These are strips like I'll use around the edges of a hexagon to get some of those nice swag effects that I've posted in the swag video. And here it's a little irregular on top. And what I do is I just sort of bounce it off. Again, let me beg your indulgence for the noise so I can show you what I'm doing. Twenty or one fifty bit on it. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, one writ on this. When you in a community shop, you have to use what most people want. It's too difficult to take it out to adjust the tracking every time you want to change it. Or if you push too hard on one side or the other, you're going to sand in unevenness. So use a light touch. I found that just sort of bouncing it off seems to help. If you push too hard, you're going to burn it and you're going to discover that your nice rectangle is now a trapezoid or some other shape that you really don't want. All right, now, the third important function with the table in the flat position, but I'm using another sander over here as my table. I've gotten into the bad habit of using this as my table. There is a very aggressive 12-inch disc here, and I almost ruined one bowl as it, by vibration, it gradually came across and started sanding a flat side in. So I'm making a deliberate effort to find some other table. If you want to get a rounded corner, in my book, the bases for the multicolored jar and for the ginger jar have rounded corners. A lovely way to do that is using the vertical sander. Now, to sand in a curve, turn on the sander. started out as a sharp corner is now nicely rounded and the more you do it the more extreme the curvature so for things like bases where you want to get a nice rounding or a lid if you wanted to do a square lid with a sort of a rounded corner this is the tool of choice